Welcome to Accessible Art History, the podcast, the best place for art history lovers or anyone that is curious. My name is Annalisa, and I'm here to share an incredible work with you. Just a quick reminder before we get started. All sources and images will be posted on the Accessible Art History blog. You can find the link in the episode description as well as on our Instagram at accessible.art.history. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get started. Welcome to Season 10 of Accessible Art History, the podcast. I can't believe that we've arrived at the final season of 50 Works That Shaped Western Art. Personally, I have loved exploring the past with you. I started just over a year ago, and it's been so much fun to discuss art and history. In addition, producing this podcast series has helped me to gain a new perspective on Western art. Don't worry, though. I have a few new series planned for future release. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at accessible.art.history to keep up to date on all the latest content. To start the season off, I'm going to be examining one of the most important artists in the modern art movement, Jackson Pollock. His work, Autumn Rhythm No. 30, is full of chaotic drips that tell an interesting story. So to learn more, keep on listening. When viewing the work Autumn Rhythm, the first thing you notice is the size. It's absolutely massive. Measuring at an astonishing 17 feet wide and 8 feet high, the viewer is immediately encompassed by a cacophony of line and color. Lines, paint streaks, drips, drops, and more cover the canvas, drawing the eye into a million different places at once. It may seem like a work with no rhyme or reason, but it's actually an excellent example of abstract expressionism. In order to fully understand this work, I think it's important to discuss and understand Jackson Pollock's process. He was famous, maybe even infamous, for his technique. Instead of propping the unprimed canvas up on an easel, Pollock would lay it flat on the ground in a space that he could walk all the way around it. Then he would drip, smear, drop, etc., paint all around. There was no central point. Pollock would allow his body and emotions to guide the paint. His movements became as much of the work as the paint itself. I think Pollock put it best when he described the process. Quote, I'm very representational some of the time, and a little of the time. But when you're working out of your unconscious, figures are bound to emerge. Painting is a state of being. Painting is self-discovery. Every good artist paints what he is." Next, we're going to dive more into depth into Pollock and abstract expressionism. But first, let's take a quick break. Hey there, my name is Annalisa, and I'm the founder of Accessible Art History. As a part of my content offerings, I produce a podcast. For the first several seasons, I will be discussing 50 objects that shape the history of Western art. From prehistoric cave paintings to contemporary art, I'll be covering it all. The podcast was designed for everyone, from the casual couch historian to a museum's expert. It all fits within the larger mission of Accessible Art History to create a space for art history lovers, students, and anyone who is curious to explore all periods of art history and human creation. New episodes drop every Monday on your favorite podcast platform. Make sure to follow the Instagram page for all updates at accessible.art.history. Now that we're back, let's take a look at some of the interpretations of this work. The first is a naturalistic element, especially since Pollock eventually named the work Autumn Rhythm. With the drips and lines, it shows us that nature and the world around us is constantly changing. Another meaning comes from the fact that Pollock moved constantly around the canvas to create the piece. It shows art as a complete body experience that should be experienced through all the body senses. Equality is also a big theme in this painting. There's no single focus to this piece, especially when compared to more traditional works. Instead, the eye wanders from drip to drop, trying to find something to focus on. It's chaotic and confusing, but it makes one think about all the artistic possibilities. These interpretations all narrow down to one central theme, emotion. Each stroke, line, and drop comes from Pollock's emotional core. Though it looks scattered, each mark is quite deliberate. 
Autumn rhythm is an expression of Pollock's deepest feelings. This emotional evocation is a marker of the abstract expressionist movement. Started in America in the 1940s, the Cirstic style was created by a loose affiliation of artists. It grew out of the horrors of both the Great Depression and the Second World War. Artists were looking for ways to cope with and understand the deep emotions that came from such traumas. This awareness of the dark side of humanity translated into a new use of color and line on a monumental scale. In addition, some of the inspiration came from the early archaic art in the fairly basic interpretation of the world around it. Pollock was one of the first artists to adopt the style, leaving a huge mark on the development of modern art. Paul Jackson Pollock was born on January 28, 1912 in Cody, Wyoming. His mother moved the family to California when he was less than a year old and grew up between there and Arizona. From a young age, Pollock was interested in art. After he was expelled from two different high schools, he traveled to learn about art and culture from both Native American and Mexican artists. In the mid-1930s, Pollock made his way to New York City, where he lived and worked with fellow artists. It was here that his career blossomed, and he began to make a name for himself in the modern art space. In 1945, Pollock married Lee Krasner, a fellow artist. She would have a profound effect on his work, teaching him new techniques and encouraging his craft. It was during their marriage, between 1947 and 50, that his famous drip artworks were painted. If one compared the married artist's works to each other, they will find many similarities as they worked together and encouraged each other. Tragically, Pollock's career was cut short when he died on August 11, 1956. He was known to suffer from alcoholism, which had a marked effect on both his art and his marriage. That night, Pollock got behind the wheel of his Oldsmobile convertible after a night of heavy drinking. He caused a single car accident, which killed him and one of his passengers, Edith Metzger. His mistress, Ruth Kilgman, was injured, but did survive. Today, we remember Pollock as one of the first great painters of the modern age. After his death, both the Museum of Modern Art and the Tate London hosted a number of exhibitions showcasing his works. Autumn Rhythm number 30 is a massive work with a massive impact. Not only did it introduce a new way of thinking about what art could be, but it was one of the works that helped to kick off the modern art movement. Make sure to tune in next week when I discuss Andy Warhol's Marilyn Diptych. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Accessible Art History, the podcast. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at accessible.art.history for updates and keep an eye out for our next episode. They drop every Monday on your favorite podcast platform.